What's up guys and welcome to another Simple Truth video. Today we're going to be taking a look at that nearly pain that you get in the middle of your back whilst also improving some abs. So yes, we are back with another Simple Truth and today we're going to be taking a look at that, that little knot, that little bugger, that little git that gets right between those shoulder blades that just tightens up and doesn't ever seem to be able to release. Today, we're going to look at how we can avoid this, how we can release it and how we can stop it from coming back whilst also, that's right, not just one thing, but two things. That's right, this method is going to help strengthen your core, make your core work harder, work more efficiently and gain from helping reduce back pain. Now this video isn't going to be full of cool, slow-mo, motivational stuff. So instead, what I'm going to give you is a couple of these. So, how did I come about with thinking about doing this? Well, it's because I have that back pain continuously. Like all the goddamn time. Plus, that's right, I lied when I said two, it's actually three things. But it's actually more, but when we get to the end of the video, you'll see it's more, but three, three major things. The third point being, this is gonna help you guys who have an issue with your squats. If it just doesn't feel right, if it just doesn't connect right, like you're doing it and it feels like it's crushing your soul rather than working your quads and your glutes like it should be, this one little hack, one little thing, will probably improve your entire squat and how it feels. Because that's exactly what it did for me. So this originally came around when I started thinking and looking at my squat more and how many movements that have to be incorporated into creating that one singular movement known as the squat. There are so many error points that there can be during that motion that it made me look at everything I do in the gym. And one thing I started looking at was, why do I have this continual knot in the middle of my back, with building my shoulder blades? I put it down to the fact that I train a lot. You know, I, I take enough rest days, but I train a lot. So my body's going through a lot of things. It's just something I'm gonna to have to put up with. Nah, that's just wrong. If you have a pain that's continually there all the time, not it doesn't affect you, it doesn't hurt you, but it's always there, it's always like, feels tight. That's not normal. You need to find why that pain is there constantly or why that tightness is there constantly and you need to address it. If you don't address it, what it's actually gonna do is send you backwards. It's going to create a motor pathway between you and your muscles that's gonna stick around. You're basically training your body to maintain that tightness and that's what we're gonna to undo today with this one little thing. Before we get to that, let's remember that one point. Mind to muscle connections and the fact that you train these motor pathways within your body, you create these pathways, are how your body functions, how it moves through ranges of motions. Now, just like if you do it correctly and you set everything, you train your body through that correct motion, that correct, that correct pathway. The same thing happens if you train incorrectly and do it over a long period of time, you're going to make your body go back to that bad form every time because you're training it to do that. So you're going to train that bad range of motion. You're gonna train those stabilized muscles that shouldn't be working to be working during a movement. And what's gonna happen is some parts that should be stabilized and getting stronger are actually gonna get weaker and are gonna be compensated for by other body parts, other muscles, other areas that shouldn't actually be working. Does that make sense? If you can get that into your head, it should change the way you look at everything you do. So if you're feeling something work where it shouldn't be working, that's wrong. It's not just a side effect of the exercise you're trying to do. It means you're not engaging something that should be engaging. It means you're not focusing somewhere you should be focusing. So what's this one thing that I noticed? Looking at it now, it's annoying that I didn't notice it earlier. Really, really annoying. Can I make you want to do this annoying? What I noticed I was doing was I was allowing my back to be dominant in areas where it shouldn't be during motions. And this was happening throughout most of my workout because the back is a huge area. It has a lot of muscles in there. They're also very strong and they're also very naturally incorporated into the movements the human body is designed to do. Pulling motions. We're good at, we're good at this. Do and pull and pull. What we're not really designed to do is shift heavy loads with singular presses like we do on bench press. We, never would you do that. If you need to push something, what do you do? You hunker down, you get your hands on it, you bring your elbows in, you put your whole body weight through and shove. Rarely do we ever just press. We're not designed for that, which is often why you see a lot of shoulder injuries on pressing. The natural ability of the human body is pull. We're very good at it. My back is quite strong, it always has been. Ironically, it was one of my least favorite body parts to train when I started um, in the gym, but it became one of my best features and it is a very, very capable part of my body. 
So what I was doing was allowing my back to take over when actually my core should have been doing the stabilizing job. I'm getting a tight knot in the middle of my shoulder blades here all the time. Why is that? And it's because what I was allowing was my upper back to take control of the stabilization. So you see this motion here? So the rib cage is expanding, my back is tightening and locking up, so it is making everything restricted here in this kind of motion. So it's stabilizing me here by locking in the back muscles, when what should have been happening is my core should have been tightening up and stopping this motion from occurring, and then I'm allowed to pull my lats in and contract there to help stabilize further. All I was doing was lats were coming in, but then also upper back. So lats were in and upper back was coming in causing this to happen, this tilt. So you can see here, the rib cage has expanded. But what it should actually be doing is it should be nice and tight like this. So I can pull my back and lock in here, but this should also be locked in. It wasn't doing that, so what was happening was I was allowing back to contract and this to relax, and this happens. And this is a very, very natural way to feel like standing. Expanded rib cage, you almost feel like you're doing a vacuum, but you're not. A vacuum is this, here. See how this is still down? If I release, see what happens? Now what happens there? The lower back arches, we get this arch in the lower back, meaning the lower back is no longer engaged, and all that pressure is going on this upper back, hence, we're getting this tightness in between the shoulder blades because this contraction, pulling the scapula and everything being pulled in there, that's what's creating that tightness and that tension and it's being overworked as a stabilizer because the core isn't doing its job. So, how do we fix this? So remember when I said about training yourself into bad habits? Right, we're gonna have to detrain that bad habit and we're gonna have to replace it by creating a whole new habit, a good habit of engaging the core throughout everything we do. The problem with this is, this one little thing that I just showed you that we're doing there, I guarantee, in the form of the rock, I guarantee, no, it's a bit more stone cold than the rock. <sighs> and that's the bottom line, cause Lex said so. This one bad habit will definitely have crossed over into other movements, we're gonna take a look at those today, but the one major exercise I think a lot of you are gonna benefit from is gonna be the change of this habit during your squats. So we'll take a look at that, but let's first take a look at the mechanism we need to change. And yes, this is how I sit most of the time when I'm not really focusing on really shredding or doing anything in particular. So you can see there's a little bit of fat around the back here, but still nice detail everywhere. So just to give you a perspective on what you see on Instagram compared to no pump, day-to-day -day looks. What we want to focus on here today is this here, this section, these upper four abs and the rib cage. What we need to be doing to create this new motor pathway is thinking about pulling our rib cage down. And my bad mechanism, my bad habit is this. Stood nice and relaxed, this is how it should be. If I release everything and let it all relax in my midsection, this happens. Nice and tight and flat, back's nice and neutral, posture's good. Release. The chest rises, the rib cage expands, and again, watch the lower back, release, lower back arches, upper back, chest comes up, and that upper back, that starts to take the strain. So what we've seen is this, this movement. We need to stop this happening. We need to train this posture back into our bodies. Now some of you will naturally have this. Some of you guys will be so flat here that it's sickening. Yes, we're jealous of you. But a lot of people like me will have this habit of allowing the back to arch and this rib cage to expand that creates this almost hollow part of your stomach here as if you might think like you're doing a vacuum but really this isn't a vacuum we should be still pulling the ribs down this is a vacuum pulling in and up if you struggle to do a vacuum it's probably because you're allowing this bit to extend and relax up here and really everything needs to be pulling in and up Think, connect that muscle, connect it. Think about pulling that rib cage down. Rib cage up, rib cage down. It might feel a little hard because the muscle's not used to doing it, to not holding it here. The more you do this day to day, so think about it even when you're driving. Start setting it, start catching yourself, start noticing when this weakness happens and adjust. And the more you adjust, the more the body will adapt. The more the body adapts, the more natural this becomes, the more you change that pathway. Which reminds me, and when your training partner lets something slack off, adjust it, tap where he needs to engage. Just say it to him, tap, engage. Once you do this, not only are you going to get a better, more stable exercise through all the different movements, 
but your core is going to start to sit flatter. The abs are going to start getting worked better during exercises, which means your entire core, all this look is going to improve because right now they're being lazy. So you do this one simple change, all this will improve. This is such a simple hack, but it's not simple to implement. You have to be on it. You have to be critical, positively critical towards yourself, towards your training partners. 100% Lex guarantee. Not only will you start to stand taller, stand better, keep that nice tight midsection, all your other muscle groups will improve as well because they're gonna start working like they should. Okay, so now we've got in our heads what we're gonna be looking at. Remember this, rib cage down, pelvic tilt, abs controlled, not allowing that lower back to arch, not allowing the chest to expand by allowing the rib cage to expand. Keep these in your mind, because now we're gonna go and take a look at this exercise to exercise. Now this isn't every exercise that you can apply this to. You need to apply this to everything that you do, even ones that require you to set an arch in your lower back. So even when you arch your back, just think about controlling those upper abs. I can still arch here and pull here. I'm still getting that nice arch in my back as if I'm gonna do a bench press, but I'm still tight here. And then I can lock those lats in. So with that said, with that in your mind, let's go take a look at some of the fundamental exercises that these are gonna change for you right now. Batman theme tune. So starting with the squat, here what you want to look at is the hips and the ribs. As the ribs are allowed to expand, the hips can kick back, but the weight's not dropping anywhere. So you're actually kicking back without going down. And that's what's gonna create a lower arch in the back. And if you slow it down, you can see here, everything is out of position before it's even started to move. Then as you come back up, if we stop keeping that body in that same posture, look how horrendous it is. And you can see all that stress is not on the quads, it's on the upper back and it's also gonna be on the knees. If you look at it in real time, it's hard to notice at speed, but you can see the ribs expand and the butt kick back before the weight starts to move down. That's not what it needs to look like. So by applying the rule that we talked about before, pulling the rib cage down, that'll help you engage your glutes and you can see a marked difference in the end posture, much better alignment, and that pressure is gonna be taken off the back. You can see here how much more natural it looks, how different and how there is no dual motion. If you want to finish correctly, you need to start correctly. Break habits, so don't lift off with an arch in your lower back. Get under the bar as you mean to start. That means pull that rib cage down, engage the core, and lift off into the starting position. This is gonna help develop that new motor pathway. Breathing is another big factor. Deep breaths are important at the start of a rep, but expanding the rib cage like this, you can see arches the lower back. So deep breaths in should look like this, maintaining control of the core. And you can see how the back stays more aligned. This applies to during your exercise. So don't inhale at the top and allow it to expand the rib cage like you saw there. Do inhale with the core engaged and then it'll help you drop into a more natural range of motion. Again, we're trying to break those bad habits and create good new habits. So with that all now in mind, also remember this little handy hint, and that's to roll your knees out through the entire range of motion of your squat, and that'll stop your knees rocking in. So with the squat now out the way, let's move on to some more common exercises where I have found that this issue takes place and by changing it, you can feel the exercise in a whole different way. You will feel it focus better, you'll be able to squeeze harder, you'll be able to create better tension, which over time creates better technique, better form, better engagement with the muscle, better mind to muscle connection, gains. Batman sound. Starting with bicep curls, you'll see this really commonly done. Shoulders go back, ribs pop up, lower back arches. This leads to even further arching with heavier weights. This is most people in the gym. What we want to see is abs engaged, roll the shoulders back. Now you can see you get a much stricter motion, better shoulder stabilization, and the ability to rock is pretty much removed. Onto a standing shoulder press or a press of any kind. What you'll see a lot of the time is ribcage expanded, and as they press up, it stays expanded lower back arches and the chest moves up. What this actually does is restrict the range in which your scapula can move and leads to impingement a lot of the time. Here with the abs in, you will feel the motion much, much more. You're also going to get a better range of motion from your scapula and more focus on the shoulder. So you end up with a better, more natural range of motion and less chance of getting a winged impinged scapula. Lateral raises, here's one that's done wrong most of the time anyway, but with the ribs allowed to expand that lower back arch, you end up with way more range of motion than you should have. You can go way higher than you need to. 
if you engage things properly, bring the core in, shoulders still go back, but you can see that arch is taken away, which allows the weights to move through the shoulders natural range of motion and you don't get that added extra height by allowing the back to arch and the chest to rise this is going to create way more focus pullovers now whether this is with weights or cables here's the common thing as you reach up you'll allow the rib cage to expand so you're already starting in a bad position from there you can see how the chest is allowed to rise lower back has a serious arch in it and everything is being stabilized by that upper back the zero core going on here if you engage the core properly, reach up with the core engaged. You're going to start right, then finish right. Here from a higher angle, you can already see better alignment and that stress on the back during the negative part of the motion is going to be maintained because the back can't arch. That arch takes away from the stress staying on the back, the area you're trying to focus on. So this is going to be one of the big exercises you really feel a difference. Throughout, you need to watch your technique and make sure you're not releasing because here you can see cores engaged at the start but then gets released towards the end. So make sure you're checking throughout. Triceps extensions are another one where if you reach up and start disengaged, you'll move through the whole range of motion disengaged at the core. So here you can see this looks decent. I mean, it is going to hit my triceps, but you can see the cores disengaged, arching the lower back. Engage the core, reach up with the core engaged. From here, you'll see I get the same angle on the arm which is allowing the triceps full extension but what i'm also getting is better training towards shoulder stabilization plus more focus on the triceps as there's less body weight moving through the motion moving on to a direct core exercise hanging leg raises is a real one to look for again it's about reaching up correctly if you reach up disengage like this like i'm showing you here you'll start disengaged just like you can see here so the abs get worked on the positive but that release at the negative that is due to not keeping the upper abs tensed and allowing the lower back to arch you can see here lower back arches full release of the rib cage and abs so i'm actually losing a lot of negative tension and that will also make you swing by engaging the upper abs reaching up with them engaged is going to allow you to set your back and shoulders where they need to be properly so make sure you pull them in before even lifting then as you can see on the negative here tension throughout the entire core plus the chance of your body being able to swing from this is severely reduced. So if you find you swing a lot on your hanging leg raises, this will probably fix it, improve your tension on the abs, and finally give you that core you've been working for. Come on! So there you go, guys. You can see how this one simple hack can improve a whole diverse range of exercises. Plus, it's going to really help engage that core and improve the way your abs look, the tightness of your waistline, keeping that waistline nice and tight and keeping it slim because it's not going to allow the other exterior muscles like the serratus here to have to deal with stabilization when the rest of the core isn't, which is going to stop these bits, also known as love handles, once they get some fat on them, but it's going to stop these areas from thickening out, which is going to be a huge incentive alone just for you guys to pick up and run with this idea. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it really helps. Again, go and try it. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments section. Hit me up on any of these social media links you can see here below. I do read them. And for those of you that are always commenting, you know I reply to you guys. So that has been another Simple Truth video. I have been Lex. You have been the crew. I am Lex.